A week of homecoming events kicked off with a parade in downtown Lake Oregon and ended with a football game against the visiting Seaholm Maples, where a new king and queen were crowned at halftime. Hundreds of children and their parents came out to the Oregon Center for some Halloween fun. ONTV hosted its 8th annual Wildwood Film Festival, where cash prizes were handed out to some very talented local filmmakers. One local business braved through the challenges of the pandemic and the Chamber of Commerce helped them celebrate with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. The Halloween season is upon us and there is no shortage of fun events for local families to enjoy. Recently, Orion Township hosted one of its most popular events and a little rainy weather couldn't dampen the spirit of those taking part. On Friday, October 15th, more than 200 children and their parents arrived at the Orion Center for the popular Halloween Boo Bash event. Due to the rainy weather, everything was moved indoors where games and trick-or-treat stations occupied two floors of the Orion Center. So normally for Boobash, we have a lot of events outside our trick-or-treat street, carnival games. We have a hay wagon ride um, to a pumpkin patch and, um, and, and a few things inside. But with the weather this year, we were forced to move everything inside. So for today, we have about 10 vendors doing our trick-or-treat street. So um, they'll all get you know, candy or goodies from each local vendor. Uh, we have Leslie Nature Science Center here. They have live bats, owls, and a tarantula. Um, and we also have different carnival games. Oakland County is here with their um, large uh, yard games. We have uh, different arts and crafts, and we have cider and donuts and hay wagon ride to a pumpkin patch. The Boo Bash was created in 2008 at Friendship Park, but moved to the newly completed Orion Center in 2012. In 2020, the Boo Bash was held at Friendship Park due to the pandemic, but returned to the Orion Center in 2021. When the rain lightened up, families boarded a hay wagon and took a trip to a makeshift pumpkin patch where the little ones could claim their very own pumpkin. On the lower level of the Orient Center, Lisa Usselman of the Leslie Science and Nature Center showed off some creatures typically associated with Halloween. Well, probably the first thing that you're noticing right here is our barred owl. Um, he is a species that you can actually find in Michigan. So one of the big things that we like to talk about are animals that can be found around us and how we can actually do our part to protect the habitats of these kinds of animals right in our own backyards. Um, some of the other animals that I brought, though, are animals that you'd have to travel a little bit farther away to see. So um, over here, I have a tarantula. You'd have to go all the way to South America to find her. Or farther down the line, we have some fruit bats that would be found in Africa. Now, all of these animals play important parts in their habitats, no matter where you can find them. But especially around Halloween, I like to bring animals like this because sometimes these animals get a bad rap for being maybe scary. But turns out they're really important in nature and they do a lot of really great things for us humans. So that's my biggest goal tonight is to show people how exciting they are and how not scary they are. Event organizer Jesse Hayes wanted to thank the sponsors and volunteers who came together to make this year's Boo Bash a success. My park staff, my co-workers, the programmers, um, waste management for sponsoring the bats and uh, owls, and then all of our local vendors. Um, and uh, Oakview Middle School, they are the helping hands. They are great volunteers. We definitely could not do that without them. Just a few weeks earlier, Orion Township hosted an outdoor event to encourage families to celebrate the arrival of fall. Orion Township's Fall Festival of Family Fun returned to Camp Agawam after a brief hiatus in 2020. Although the weather wasn't very cooperative, families still came out to enjoy carnival games, crafts, a petting zoo, music, and food. Local vendors and organizations got in on the fun, and families were able to take a hay wagon ride throughout Camp Agawam. Um, we kind of wanted to have an event that was free for the public and in the fall time we have a uh, summer event called Summer Sizzle. So we wanted to kind of mimic that but out at one of our parks that people aren't super familiar with which is Camp Agawam. So this morning it was very rainy and sad but the sun is out now and it's warm and I think we will be having a great event with lots of people. They're, they're coming in one by one and it's, it'll be a good turnout. The Fall Festival of Family Fun was created in 2019 
but the township was forced to cancel it in 2020 due to the COVID pandemic. Local families seem to welcome its return and due to its close proximity to the Kaboom playground, there was no shortage of fun activities for the little ones to enjoy. Orion Township has numerous events and activities geared toward families planned for the upcoming holiday season. For more information, visit orionparks.com. As the Lake Orion Dragons varsity football season begins to wind down, the community came together to celebrate homecoming week with a parade in the village, the Powder Puff football game, and of course, the football game against the Birmingham Seahome Maples, where a new king and queen were crowned at halftime. ONTV's Joe Johnson has all the highlights. On the afternoon of Sunday, October 10th, residents lined the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the 2021 homecoming parade. Leading the way was the Lake Orion Police Department's 1941 Ford police car, followed by students and faculty representing each of Lake Orion's six elementary schools, three middle schools, and of course, Lake Orion High School. The homecoming court made their way down Flint Street as announcer Lori Hogan introduced them to the crowd, including the seniors representing the class of 2022. And our senior representatives, first up we have Heidi Schuster and Kristen Garsfeld. <laughs> Members of the class of 2022. Senior court is wearing green and our other reps are wearing gold. Next up, we have Paige Walker and Jackson Ben. <laughs> Paige and Jackson have been running a strong social media campaign. They're hoping to win King and Queen on Friday night. <laughs> Both members of the marching band. Next up, we have Melinda Brock and Clayton Piper. <laughs> Melinda is the vice president of student leadership and Clay is a member of our swim team. <laughs> Melinda and Clay, members of the class of 2022. And our next court representative, a varsity cheerleader named Michaela Long. <laughs> Michaela is hoping to take home the crown on Friday night as she cheers the Dragons to victory. Warm round of applause for senior court member, Michaela Long. Students representing various school groups and athletes from a wide variety of sports took part in the parade, including members of the Lake Orion Dragons varsity football team and their coaches. And bringing up the rear were members of Lake Orion leadership who organized the homecoming parade. as we're seconds away from starting the first powder puff game in two years. Then on the evening of Thursday, October 14th, Lake Orion High School seniors took on the juniors in the annual powder puff football game. The seniors had won four straight prior to the cancellation of the game in 2020. Could the class of 2022 keep the streak alive? With the juniors in white facing a third and 10 on their own 20, number 26, Chloe Wiegers scrambles in the pocket, rolls right, turns the corner, dodges a half dozen would-be tacklers, and somehow manages to emerge with flags intact, and she is gone. 80 yards into the end zone to put the juniors on the scoreboard first. The extra point was no good, and the score is 6-0, juniors. Following the touchdown, the seniors responded with a nice drive. On second and goal, number 40, Brooke Schoenberg takes the direct snap and finds the end zone to even up the score. The PAT was missed and things are knotted up at six. On the next drive, we're still in the first quarter. The juniors are looking at a second and 11 on their own 34. Number one, Whitney Acker takes the handoff, goes outside and runs 66 yards into the end zone to regain the lead. The extra point was good and the juniors are back on top, 13 to six with three and a half left in the first. Let's go to the second quarter. The juniors are facing a fourth and five on the seniors 43 yard line when number 86, Grace Sullivan takes the handoff and bolts up the middle, eluding tacklers and goes the distance. 43 yards into the end zone to extend the juniors lead. The PAT was missed, but the juniors are now up two scores in the first half, 19 to six. With the second quarter winding down, the seniors are threatening to score from the junior's six yard line. 
Quarterback Olivia Peplowski hands the ball off. It's a reverse. Number 46, Madeline Smith, comes to a complete stop before sidestepping the defender and running right to find the end zone. The extra point was good, and the seniors cut into the juniors' lead. It's 19-13 at the half. Let's go to the third. The seniors are on their own nine-yard line. They pull another reverse. What the heck, it worked last time. Number 102, Gianna Rodriguez makes a nifty move and has a lane. One defender tugs at her flag to no avail. Another gets a grip, but the flag stays put. Rodriguez goes 91 yards into the end zone to tie things up. Unbelievable. Sarah Honescheid's extra point is good, and the seniors take the lead for the first time in the game, 2019. Later in the third, the juniors are forced to punt, and the seniors begin their drive inside the red zone. On the juniors' 14-yard line, Madeline Smith takes the handoff, goes right, changes direction, evades tacklers, and finds the end zone. The PAT was good, and the seniors take advantage of the momentum and extend their lead to eight points. Let's go to the fourth quarter. The seniors are at the juniors' 23-yard line, facing second and long. Number 27, Casey Lauer takes the snap, spins and rolls left. She streaks down the sideline for the score. The PAT was good, and that's all she wrote. The final score, 34-19 in favor of the seniors to keep the winning streak alive at five games. On a rainy Friday night, October 15th, the 2-5 and five Lake Orion Dragons hosted the 1-6 and six Seaholm Maples for the homecoming game. Let's get to the action. Early in the first, the Dragons are looking at second and seven on the Maples' 38-yard line when quarterback Kyler Carson hands off to Jack Wellman, who turns on the Jets and streaks down the sideline for the touchdown. The PAT was good, and the Dragons are on the board first, 7-0. Following a Maples punt, the Dragons begin a drive on the Maples 47. On the first play from scrimmage, Ray Payne takes the handoff, goes right, and nets a 30-yard gain before getting pushed out of bounds at the 17. On second and goal from the six, Carson hands off to Jack Wellman, who runs left and into the end zone untouched for a second touchdown of the game. The extra point was good, and the Dragons are up 14-0. Following another Maples punt, Lake Orion begins their drive on their own 28. On second and one at the Maples 30, Billy Roberson takes the handoff and goes the distance. The 30-yard touchdown run makes the score 21-0 with under two minutes left in the first quarter. With nine and a half left in the second quarter, the Dragons have a first and 10 on their own 25. Quarterback Tyler Carson fakes the handoff, keeps it, and just flat out outruns defenders, rushing for an impressive 75 yard touchdown. The extra point was good and the Dragons are up by four touchdowns. Following the score, both teams line up for the kickoff. The Maples mishandle the kick and the Dragons fall on to begin another drive in great field position. With 8.56 left in the half, the Dragons are facing a fourth and five. Instead of punting it away, Carson hands off to Wellman. He eludes one two, three tacklers, and whoop, jukes a fourth on his way to the end zone. The impressive run results in Wellman's third touchdown of the first half. Following the PAT, the Dragons are up 35 to nothing. At halftime, the homecoming court made its way onto the field. Returning to Dragon Stadium were 2019's King and Queen, Kate Barker and Joey Barron, to crown the 2021 King and Queen. At the direction of Lori Hogan, Joey Barron placed the crown on the head of Jackson Ben. And Kate, will you put the crown on our 2021 homecoming queen, Miss Paige Walker? We caught up with the couple on the sideline during the fourth quarter of the game. Well, honest, well, 
A lot of my friends have been asking me all day, hey, do you know if you won yet? Hey, do you know if you won yet? And so I said, you just gotta wait for the ceremony. You just gotta wait for the ceremony. So all day it's just been building up in my mind. And I was a little worried because I know all of the people who are on the court and I was like, man, any one of these people, they're super popular, super nice. Any one of these people could have been voted. And I was just super happy that these people that go in high school wanted me to be their homecoming king and Paige to be their homecoming queen. Yes, definitely. Like we don't know anything kind of before this starts. It's a lot of just like, questioning and like just excitement that's building up and definitely everyone on the court was like really really eligible to be able to be a king or queen so it was really really nice that we were able to get picked and it was really exciting to hear our names and have Kate and stuff come over and say hi and give us the crowns. In the second half the Maples did manage to avoid the shutout with a late touchdown but the Dragons came away with a convincing homecoming win the final 35-6 Lake Orient. Following the game, we had a chance to get a comment from head coach John Blackstock and quarterback Tyler Carson. It was awesome to be able to play everybody and uh, you know have, have a celebration like that. It, that's always fun, especially with the ups and downs that these guys have gone through this year. Uh, it was just a really good way to, to end some senior careers at, at home. Yeah. All right, Tyler Carson, congratulations Thank you. on a winner. Homecoming, sir. It's been an up and down season. This one's kind of feel good for you. It definitely does. As you said, up and down. There's been those games where we're right there all the way to the end. And it was just a great game. Great team. See home's a great team. So it felt good. The Dragons conclude their 2021 season with an away game against the undefeated Celine Hornets on Friday, October 22nd. From Dragon Stadium, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV Sports. Thanks, Joe. Back in October of 2014, ONTV created the Wildwood Film Festival to encourage novice filmmakers to create a short film in just one weekend. The event was such a success that it returned every year, even during the 2020 pandemic, when it was held virtually. The film festival returned in 2021, and the submissions were bigger and better than ever. On the evening of Wednesday, October 13th, ONTV hosted its eighth annual Wildwood Film Festival at the GQT Oxford 7 Theater. Filmmakers of all ages were joined by family and friends to watch 12 films on the silver screen. Things kicked off the previous Thursday when teams were assigned to prop, location, and a line of dialogue that had to be concluded in the finished film. The filmmakers had five days to plan, shoot, and edit their films. Before the October 12th deadline, a team of judges scrutinized each film and awarded points for creativity, story, and technical achievement. The winners were announced following a screening of the films at the theater in Oxford, with first place netting a $175 cash prize. Second place earned $100, and third place took home $75. Coming in third with a score of 261 points was Team Greenhouse, led by Calvin Green, for the film Lift. Wakey, wakey. Oh. Hi, friend. You have a problem. Finishing in second place with a score of 263 points was Team LSDS TV, led by Jaden Sweeney, for the film Never Alone. Oh my God, you're in love with her. But you need to let go. Let go! Let go! I play a character, I play a schizophrenic character that basically lost his wife when uh, he was a little bit younger and he couldn't get rid of all the thoughts and all the trauma so he uh, finally made a last rational decision at the end of it that uh, finished the movie, yeah. Finally let her go. Yeah. <laughs> um, and how did you come up with the idea? That is... um, I kind of came up with it just because I wanted to do something that was out of the norm and kind of something that was um, not traditional horror. So not something supernatural, but something that people actually go through. And named the top film of the 2021 Wildwood Film Festival with a score of 270 points was the film Just Roll With It, produced by Literally Nothing Productions, led by Charlie Fracker. Looks like things didn't go as planned. Regardless, you got the trophy? Yeah, we got it. It was really down to the wire, I gotta say. It, um... We put a lot of work into it, and coming down to it, we really, we were really worried we weren't going to get it done on time, but I think we did a good job for the amount of time we had and the amount of effort we put in. And how did you come up with the idea for this movie? Um, well, usually we just, you know, we think of things that we like to see, things that, uh, you know, we want to see in a film. 
I always wanted to do like a little heist movie or something like the uh, like that. So that's kind of how we got the idea for it. I always wanted to do something like that. Yeah. The 2021 Wildwood Film Festival wouldn't have been possible without the generous sponsorship of the Oxford Tap, North Oakland Concert Band, and Haney Farm Bureau Insurance. Thanks for helping to support and encourage these up and coming filmmakers. Recently, Owen TV was invited to a top secret press conference held at Greens Park on the shore of Lake Orion. The purpose of the press conference wasn't revealed until Owen TV's Tessa Penzine arrived at the location, and she's happy to report some good news for Lake Orion families. T Mobile recently began a new hometown grant program, committing to contribute $25 million in small town grants to communities across the nation over the next five years. The company announced the first batch of winners including Lake Orion's very own Greens Park. On Thursday, September 23rd, Village of Lake Orion dignitaries and representatives from T-Mobile gathered at Greens Park for a small check presentation ceremony. Lake Orion was one of 25 national recipients for the $50,000 grant. The hometown grants are T-Mobile's way of helping to improve smaller communities. You know, Teresa had submitted uh, how bringing um, more items to Green Park was really going to tie into um, making this a more robust community playground, and we wanted to be a part of that. We have a store just down the street, and we thought it would be a great tie-in to um, being uh, more invested into the community. The Village Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee plans on upgrading Green's Park with a brand new play structure so children of all ages can enjoy the park. Yeah, so Greens Park is the only public park on Lake Orion, and the majority of our residents don't actually live on the lake, or a good number of our residents don't actually live on the lake, and so this is a place where people can come and recreate here on the water, and especially over the last few years, uh, the park usage has grown exponentially, and it's been on our radar that we want a play structure, so if you went walked into the park right now, you'd see a big slide. The platform is seven feet high, and it's not appropriate for small, kill small children, and the typical age user here at Greens Park is somewhere between 2 and 10 years old and for those small children they don't have a, a safe play structure to play on it's the, the only play structures for older kids and it's just a slide and so to have a space where parents can come and bring their kids and not only swim but then also play in the playground come have a picnic when the weather turns a little cooler is just really special. When the ground thaws in spring 2022 the village will host a community build day inviting residents to help assemble the play structure. For more information about the Village of Lake Orion and upcoming events, visit downtownlakeorion.org. Reporting for ONTV News, I'm Tessa Penzine. Thanks, Tessa. The Orion Area Chamber of Commerce not only helps new businesses celebrate their grand opening, but they also help existing businesses celebrate significant milestones. On Thursday, October 7th, Representatives of the Chamber of Commerce gathered at Cookies and Cream in downtown Lake Orion to help celebrate the three-year anniversary of Practically Perfect Vacations with Krista. Now, normally three years wouldn't be considered a milestone, but considering the challenges businesses have faced over the past two years, a new business surviving the pandemic is nothing short of a miracle. Can everyone see Charlotte? Yes? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Woo! First off, it, just getting started as a new business was challenging. Um, I don't really have a business background and that sort of thing, so coming into the community and trying to find um, my place um, was a little bit difficult, but then I found the chamber and they really helped me and there was a lot of people who guided me in the chamber um, to help me start up some good business practices and things like that. Um, and then with the pandemic, obviously travel was the on the bottom of everyone's list, so it was a very difficult year. Um, and and there was a lot of things lost, but a lot of things gained. Um, my team really became a lot closer. We really focused in on um, some new practices and um, really just keeping the magic of Disney alive during the time when people were sad and um, just trying to bring the magic into the, your home um, when you couldn't go down to be in the magic. Krista grew up a huge Disney fan and her love for all things Disney grew even larger when she became a parent. She decided she wanted to help other families experience the perfect Disney getaway. Well, we're called Practically Perfect Vacations, and um, our slogan is helping you travel in the most delightful way, which is from Mary Poppins. Um, I specialize in Disney destinations and universal vacation packages. 
um, and so I help families from beginning to end with planning their vacations, picking their resorts, and um, helping them have a successful vacation. Krista operates out of her home, but is willing to meet with anyone looking to plan a Disney vacation. She told us the best way to contact her is on social media. Search for her at PPV with Krista on Facebook to see the most recent updates and info. You can also visit practicallyperfectvacations.com. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of Owen TV News. On behalf of the hardworking Owen TV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.